Welcome to Resolve in a Rush, where you'll learn useful Resolve tips and tricks in about five minutes. As you may know, DaVinci Resolve 15 was just announced at NAB, and Blackmagic Design has packed in a ton of new stuff. Hours and hours worth of new features and improvements that we could talk about. Now because these videos are only supposed to be about five minutes, I won't be able to cover all of them today. However, I will do my best impression of an Austrian nanny and point out a few of my favorite things. The first thing, and this isn't an extremely sexy one, is the keyboard mapping preferences. I'll go up to the DaVinci Resolve menu, to Preferences, and under the User tab I'll choose Keyboard Mapping. At first glance, it looks a lot like the previous version, but now it gives you access to a lot more commands. For example, I can now convert in and out points to a duration marker, and vice versa. I'll type duration in the search field. Now I'll double click to the right and set this to Shift Command D. This is definitely going to speed up my workflow at the start of a project. Another thing to notice is that these commands can be configured to function globally or specific to each page. For example, I may want Shift Command D to create a duration marker on the media and edit pages, but on the color page, I might want that to be the command for delete all keyframes. Excellent. I'll click Save. I'll name my new preset and click OK. In the Edit page, they've added tabbed timelines, which you can enable by clicking the Timeline View Options menu and then clicking on this button to activate tabs. While we're here, this button is where you can show and hide your subtitles tracks. And you can also tell Resolve not to draw audio waveforms in the Edit page with this button. With timeline tabs open, you can open multiple timelines and rapidly switch between them. You can even change which timeline is open in a given tab by clicking this drop down menu, which will display all of the timelines in the project. Another cool thing about this view is that you can stack timelines. To do so, click this button to the far right. Then choose which timelines you want open down here. You can now easily copy clips between timelines by dragging. To close this second timeline view, click this button. The final thing I'll address on the edit page is the ability to bypass your color corrections without switching to the color page. To do so, click this button or press Shift D. This also works on the Fairlight page, but there's no button, so you'll have to use the keyboard shortcut. The next thing I'm really stoked about is the Fusion page. Now the Fusion page is a big animal. And while it still has a steep learning curve, the Fusion page immensely expands Resolve's functionality. For now, we don't have time to build out a complete Fusion project, but you can import older Fusion comps you've made. To do so, go to the File menu and choose Import Fusion Composition. And just like that, your comp is connected to your clip. Pretty neat. Now to give you an idea of some of the awesome things you can create with Fusion, I'll go back to the edit page and show you some of the new titles they've included. These titles were all built using Fusion. Over on the color page, one very convenient new feature is the LUT browser. This thing is great, and it totally makes my earlier episode on the subject obsolete. Additionally, there are some UI improvements, including these new, cleaner-looking buttons. Also, the nodes have been updated to match up with the nodes on the Fusion page, and that gives us a cleaner look as well. There are also a multitude of other very functional improvements on the color page that we'll explore in more depth in future episodes. Jumping over to the Fairlight page, there is now direct access to the media pool, so you can easily add clips as needed. There's also an excellent ADR or automatic dialogue replacement panel. In addition to being able to build and load a cue sheet, there are a whole bunch of tools to help you rehearse, record, name, and organize any audio that you need to record via Resolve's Fairlight page. In the effects library, there are a host of new Fairlight effects for cleaning up your audio or making it dirtier if you need to. One of the great things about these Fairlight effects is that they're built into Resolve itself. So if you move from one Resolve workstation to another, 
you don't ever have to worry about these particular effects not being installed on the new machine. Anyway, that's all we have time for today. But there's a ton of great stuff here that we'll have to explore in future episodes. Stay tuned. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, also give us a thumbs up. And whether you give us a thumbs up or not, go check out rippletraining.com, the number one resource for DaVinci Resolve certification training. Thanks for watching.